Hello everyone, Sean McCaffrey here again. It's weekly wrap-up time, and wow, what an incredible week of football we got to see, both in the NCAA and in the NFL. Starting with the NCAA, big reason it was such a great week was it was rivalry week. There is not much, (laughs) that's the best week in the NCAA schedule. It's unbelievable because it's so much bad blood a lot of pettiness between schools, and it's just a ton of fun to watch. My alma mater, Virginia Tech, beat UVA over the weekend, and while Virginia Tech, my school, was celebrating on the field, UVA turned on the sprinklers, so uh, definitely (laughs) a... uh, Always a little bit of bad blood between the schools, but hey, at the end of the day, the Commonwealth Cup is coming home to Virginia Tech, my school. So, But going into the big-time games that took place this weekend, Alabama, Auburn, reason I bring this one up, what an incredible play to end the game. It is fourth and goal from the 31-yard line, less than 45 seconds in the game. Alabama throws the ball back corner of the end zone, just a Hail Mary kind of throw, just whatever happens, happens, and catch, win the game, Auburn loses to Alabama in miracle fashion, so that was a crazy ending to an incredible game, and then of course, the biggest game, the most talked about game of the year on the NCAA schedule, Michigan versus Ohio State, two top five teams, two Goliaths, two teams expected to be in the college football playoff. The winner expected to basically all but punch their ticket, completely secure it for the NCAA playoff. The loser, kind of now looking on the outside, hopeful to get in, has a good chance to get in, but it still hurts their chances somewhat significantly. So the winner of Michigan-Ohio State was Michigan 30-24. to It was a great game, and just Michigan beat out Ohio State. So a tough look for Ohio State, a tough day for them. Now, moving into the NFL, of course, this past week was Thanksgiving. Is there anything better than the NFL on Thanksgiving? I'm not sure if there is. Food and football and family, a triple F, if you will. Uh, Big, big fan of it. I love it. It's one of my favorite things to, to have, one of my favorite days of the year. So jumping into the games that took place on Thanksgiving, Packers-Lions was how the day started. The Packers surprised the Lions 29-22. to Nobody really gave the Packers a chance in this one, but they went out there. They surprised a great team in the Lions, and Jordan Love, the quarterback for the Packers, he's dealt with a lot of criticism this year. He went out there, three touchdown passes on Thanksgiving Day, and gave his team the win. Cowboys versus Commanders, that was the second game. Nobody expected this one to be close, and it wasn't. The Cowboys completely destroyed the Commanders 45-10. to The Cowboys have been the same story all year. They just completely beat up on bad teams, and then they go and they play the good ones, and they just can't seem to get the job done. Then the primetime game, 49ers versus Seahawks. 49ers honestly just routed the Seahawks 31-13. to I don't even think the score reflects how much of a domination it was for the 49ers. They look like they are completely back on track after losing those three games. And of course, I have to mention, because it was the NFL Thanksgiving, John Madden, an NFL legend. They did a great job of remembering him throughout the day. One of the biggest traditions he had that he brought to the NFL. Of course, he was an incredible commentator. He was an incredible coach. And he also... Played a big part in now one of the most popular video games ever made, Madden. He actually also invented Turducken, which is a pretty crazy invention. But now the players, they eat it after the game. And it's actually a really, really cool tradition. So there's going to be a couple clips to that in the description. Now, one of the very first Black Friday games was the Dolphins versus the Jets. Not a very competitive one. Dolphins beat the Jets 34-13. to But I do like the Dolphins coach. He is a pretty funny guy. One of the cool things that came out of that. It's actually not even about the game, really. But Mike McDaniel, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, is standing on the sideline next to the heater. He's being chirped at by a couple of Jets fans. And then his response to them, when they're making fun of him for standing near the heater, he said, I'm cold. But we're, he's like, I'm cold. And we're winning, so I, you know, he. It was kind of a funny joke from him. Uh, I'm gonna put a clip to that. I did not do a great job describing it right there. Now, finally, kind of into the main slate that took place on Sunday, a whole lot of surprise teams that have been on a little bit of a roll recently. 
First game I'm going to mention, Colts versus Buccaneers. The Colts, they beat the Bucs 27-20. Gardner Minshew, the backup quarterback, he's now their starter for the rest of the season after Anthony Richardson went down. The Colts are 6-5. and five. Gardner Minshew had a great game, and they went again win 27-20, to 20, so they're right in the middle of the AFC playoff race. Another team in the middle of the AFC playoff race after now a five-game win streak is the Denver Broncos. They beat the Browns 29-12, to 12, a really impressive performance from Russell Wilson, of all people, everybody pretty much gave up on the Broncos, but it looks like they are making a comeback. Bears, Vikings, that was a surprise game because nobody expected the Bears to win it, but they win 12-10, to not the most exciting of games. Josh Dobbs, the quarterback from the Vikings, threw four interceptions. He had that great two-game run when he first came to Minnesota, and now it's looking like it's coming crashing down a little bit for him, so pretty concerning as the Vikings drop to 6-6. Six and six. And then, of course, the last kind of surprise team, Giants versus Patriots, 10-7, to the Giants win, and Danny DeVito has another pretty good game. So, you know what? Winning two games in a row in the National Football League, there is nothing easy about doing that, so good for Danny DeVito to get that done. The Giants move to 4-8, and eight, but still pretty cool to see him win those two games there. Top teams, a lot of them battled it out uh, on Sunday. So Jaguars versus Texans, it was a battle for first place in the AFC South. The Jaguars won 24-21. to Really tough game. Two young quarterbacks and Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback for the Jaguars. CJ Stroud, the quarterback for the Texans. That seemed to be, this might be a matchup for many years to come in the AFC South. And the Jags get the better of them in this one. The Chiefs and the Raiders. Another divisional game, the Chiefs, they dropped that one to the Eagles last week, but they come back out. They beat the Raiders by 14 points, 31-17 to 17 was the final there. Ravens versus Chargers, the Ravens, one of the best teams in the AFC. They beat the Chargers 20-10. to 10. It's a tough look for the Chargers as they now drop to 4-7. and seven. They have such a talented roster, but they just can't seem to do anything with it. And then, maybe what is the game of the year almost to this point? Eagles versus Bills. Eagles win the game 37-34 to in overtime. It was an incredible game. In order to get the... I was very excited by it. Of course, I am an Eagles fan, so I, <laughs> I was bouncing off the walls. But there was a lot of points where I was very stressed out. The Eagles now, again, have the best record in the NFL. And now in their last four games, they were trailing at halftime and have come back to win the game. This one, Jake Elliott, the kicker from the Eagles, hit a 59-yard field goal in the pouring rain to tie it and send it to overtime as time expired. Pretty incredible, the fact that he was able to do that. That is an unbelievably difficult kick in perfect conditions, but to do it in the pouring rain is unbelievable. Of course, going to put a clip to that because I can't watch it enough times. Very exciting, but in overtime, it wasn't over. Obviously, once that kick was made, game went to overtime. Bills actually started with the football, went down, got a field goal. Now, of course, that gave the Eagles a chance to go and get a touchdown because scoring a touchdown would mean the Eagles won, and that's exactly what they did. They went down, scored a touchdown, and won the football game. So Eagles now top of the NFC, sitting pretty comfortably up there. A couple other division games to mention, Steelers versus Bengals. The Bengals lost Joe Burrow last week, their best player easily, or definitely the face of the franchise. Uh, Steelers, they get the win 16-10, so a pretty big win for them there. Falcons and Saints, the Falcons win 24-15. Somebody has to win the NFC South. It's an absolutely atrocious division. The Falcons now lead it at 5-6. and six. Uh, It's not a lot of fun to watch those games, I'll be honest. The offense just is not there. A lot of pretty poor play. But Falcons, they do sit on top of the division. And if they win it, they do get themselves a playoff spot. And then one final game to mention from this past week, Titans versus Panthers. The Titans, they win it 17-10. to The Panthers, they have the worst record in the NFL. And they just fired their head coach, Frank Wright, this week. Second season in a row, Frank Wright has been fired from his head coaching job, but the Panthers, I don't know what David Temper, the owner of the Panthers, expected this season. They don't have a very talented roster, and so obviously they were going to struggle, and Frank Wright gets fired midseason yet again. So a pretty bad look for the Panthers as they don't even own their first round draft pick this year. Now moving in to my predictions, 
I think the number one seed in the AFC is the Chiefs. I actually would say the Ravens, but the Ravens play a more difficult schedule than the Chiefs to finish out the season. So I think the Chiefs are going to secure themselves the number one seed and the first round bye that comes along with it. And this might sound biased, but I think Jalen Hurts is going to be the MVP this year. I think that performance on Sunday, he started off actually very poorly and then really turned it on in the second half. I think he solidified himself at the top of that MVP conversation, and I think he's going to finish out the year and win it. Finally, my bet of the week, Lions versus Saints. Lions minus four is what the line is, so they're expected to win by four points or more. Uh, 88% of bets are on that, and I'm going to go with that. The Lions, obviously losing on Thanksgiving was very tough for them. But the Saints, they really look like a bad team. And I think the Lions are a resilient one. They're going to come back out with something to prove after that loss. So I think they're going to cover that spread. So this was Sean McCaffrey with the weekly wrap-up. Hit that like button. Make sure you guys leave your comments on your thoughts from this past week, uh, NCAA or NFL. And I hope you guys enjoyed listening.